I am Anil Kumar sharing with you a very interesting test problem from analytical geometry. The question here is, determine the type of quadrilateral created by the points of intersection of the lines x minus y plus 3 equals to 0, y equals to x minus 2, y equals to minus 0.5x plus 5 and x plus 2y plus 12 equals to 0. Now we are given four different lines and they will intersect to form a quadrilateral. Let us analyze these lines one by one. The first one here is x minus y plus 3 equals to 0. If I write it in slope intercept form, I can write this as y equals to, taking y on this side, x plus 3. x plus 3. The second line here is y equals to x minus 2. So let us, it's already in slope intercept form. We'll just keep it as such. The third line is y equals to minus 0.5x plus 5 and that is also in slope intercept form and the fourth one here is x plus 2y plus 12 equals to 0. So let's rearrange. We get 2y equals to minus x minus 12 or y is equals to minus half x and 12 divided by 2, let me write this as 6. Okay, so that is the third line. You can write this in fraction form also, minus half x plus 5. Now, when you have these four lines, what do you observe? The slope of this line is m equals to 1. Here, slope is equals to 1. That means these two lines are parallel lines, correct? So let's call them as line 1, line 2. So what we notice is that line 1 is parallel to line 2. Let this be line 3 and let this be line 4. Now the slope here is again minus half in this case and slope here is minus half also. That means line 3 and 4 are parallel. So line 3 is parallel to line 4. So these four lines definitely form a parallelogram, correct? So since we have two sets of parallel lines, we have two sets of parallel lines. That should result in what? What type of quadrilateral? So it is a parallelogram. So that is, that is our answer for this. Now the only thing which you could do further is to find the point of intersections of these points and then find whether this parallelogram is a rhombus or not. That means whether the side lengths are equal or not. Well, that is going to take a lot of time in the test paper. So, uh, is it worthwhile doing it? That is my question. Or we could have a approach by making approximate graphs and then making a judgment, right? Now, let us sketch these lines one by one. So I'm just making a very rough sketch so that in the test you can make a judgment whether you should find the distance between uh, the four sides or not. So the first point is x plus 3, y intercept of 3 and slope is 1, right? So let us say this is 3 for us. So we just make a rough sketch and say, well, that is my line, okay? And the second one is x minus 2. So it's parallel to this line, but going through minus 2, right? So we'll say, well, this is my another parallel line. So this is line 1, this is line 2. Now let's get to these lines. So those are with negative half slope, right? So negative half means kind of like this, right? So it is from here, 5 is your y-intercept. Negative half means going down, right? So going down, but... Uh, like this kind of okay so let's say this is my line and then we have negative half slope but from negative six negative six is way here right so we'll have something now since i've drawn here and i have limitation of page i'll kind of go like this you can see from your diagram itself that the side lengths are not really equal right since they are this huge amount of difference in the test especially in the final test uh, that sketch helps to estimate 
that the side lens I should say that adjacent side lens right so opposite will be equal since it is parallelogram right side lens are not same correct therefore it is not a rhombus right therefore therefore not a rhombus do you understand so that is a very good estimated statement which exactly answers the equation so it's a parallelogram that's it and it is not a rhombus so you don't have to find with each set of line these points and once you find points you don't have to find distance between them to prove there is just a parallelogram so that is what I'm trying to emphasize here that in the test papers I've seen students spending so much of time here and they really run out of time and they are unable to do another question so they miss on a question so it's worthwhile at times to have this kind of a reasoning to answer your question and that's why I've taken this and I hope it is going to help many of my viewers. I'm Anil Kumar. You can subscribe to my videos and learn how to answer questions in the test paper. Thank you and all the best.